see where I'm probably more liberal than others is like stories. Some people, oh, we cannot tell the story until the first bingo ball falls in the spring or, you know, all these prohibitions. Well, you know, if you don't tell stories, then they'll die. If you make stories so sacred and, and so on that you can never tell them, then what's the point of having them? That's my opinion. Because I think we live in an age now where some people try to control stories, try to control the flow, in, flow of them because there is, uh, there's money to be made in it. If you can gatekeep that, then you're the one people always go to. Now, but having said that, it's important for accuracy. So whenever I publish any any Cree text or anything, like we go through a rigorous process of editing, verification of meanings, and so on. So I think that's another part of Indigenous knowledge and its dissemination that I would stress is the need for accuracy. Like if you're going to engage in it, then you have to really devote a lot of time to it. Uh, and it takes a lot of uh, time. It relationships are key too. But I think that... Sometimes we have a, indigenous people have this idea and other people have this idea, perhaps, that there's a dichotomy between indigenous orality and written texts. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there is. Mm -hmm. Why? Because my family has been writing Cree for generations. And they kept, it's not like they stopped telling stories. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes those, it's just like when you read poetry, right? A written text of poetry is there. But really, to animate it, you have to perform it. That's my philosophy. Just like the dub poets and so on. Like here, Hamilton, you have the legendary Clyde Brooks, we right? Do indeed. He's a legend. <laughs> I read with him a couple times. Now, he his text is there, but it's animated through the performance. So in in teaching, you animate your narratives by by speaking to students, by engaging them, by getting them to tell their there are stories. So one pedagogy that I use is, we're talking about oral narratives that may exist, or stories that are passed on, is to encourage them to explore and document and articulate the stories within their own families. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it, it works well, actually. Mm -hmm. But I mean, my style of lecturing is probably quite a bit different than other people's styles, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. And use of humor, yeah. right? I mean, in 1885, when my grandfathers were fighting against the British, it's kind of funny now I'm sitting in a school in the east. <laughs> <laughs> where, that, where that army came from. <laughs> where the army came from. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> it's kind of weird when you think about it. But when they were running out of bullets and stuff like that, they just started laughing and telling jokes. You know, so there's, Crees have a different sense of humor than some other people do. Think about it this way. Crees really couldn't afford like $140 therapists. <laughs> right? So what are you going to do? Are you, I mean, it, with all the trauma that's occurred, are you going to be overwhelmed? No, people laugh. Even people that don't like each other, Cree people, like don't, and not all Cree people, like, you know, are all part of this sacred hoop and er every Cree person you're going to hug. Sometimes <laughs> there might be animosities and rivalries. But even in that, the, people still like jokes and so on. And I think that's something that's lacking in a lot of academic discourse. Like people write soberly, about Wisagitsak and so on, or all these oral narratives. But some of the academic discourse, just like Wisner talks about, can bleed those stories dry of all the laughter. So then the narratives just become a specimen to catalog and to uh, map out and box, put in a box like uh, any, like the land, say. So I think humor, my methods are unorthodox, but use, use of humor. Try not to, you know, try never to uh, be gratuitous or to to make humor at someone's expense. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing, when, when you, uh, one of my students, uh, I'm te I, I teach some of them Cree on the side, like it's not a class, but I, I recognize that he was funny. So as an alternative for one of his assignments, he's going to do a stand-up comedy routine, right? Instead of writing a paper. Mm -hmm. So I think like sometimes, yes, universities in the West have this long history of written text and so on, but I think we could find alternative measures. Mm -hmm. Just like in performance, but it's not just within Indigenous studies. Performance programs do the same thing, right? Visual arts, you see what I mean? So it's, I think it's something that exists, but I'm probably more attracted to that pedagogy just by temperament and upbringing, I would say. Yeah. Um, I wish I could be more like linear and colonized. <laughs>